WCH32V003 blinking. And it's just a single chip, 8 pin uh, on a breadboard. How did it get to this? Let's take a look. This whole project started with a post online, and it's uh, probably one of a few I've seen about how on earth do you get these new 10 cents microcontrollers, the CH32V003, to blink an LED. Well, I guess firstly, why would you want to do that? <laughs> because, you know, there's plenty of other good alternatives around. Uh, and I suppose that really comes down to the specs. So if you look at the specs of, let's say, a few of the favorites that I've used uh, on this channel, there's the A1313A uh, on the left-hand side there. Sort of things I'm interested in are things like the number of PWM channels, the speed, um, how much uh, programming memory you've got. So that's 1K. And I've just color-coded a couple of the other chips that um, that I normally use. Well, the PFS154 from Paduk, which has got double the program memory. The main thing for me, particularly for the Candle project, was three uh, solid uh, PWM channels. Uh, but look at the CH32V003. It sort of stands out a little bit, just in terms of speed, the amount of program. 16 kilobytes of flash just blows that competition out of the water. Um, two kilobytes of SRAM, and uh, pretty much everything is a PWM channel. Not convinced that that is true, but um, but one of the things that might be interesting to look at is look at the pinout for it. So um, this idea that if you look at pin eight here, all the different things that it can be uh, is just incredible, and it's so it's a very versatile um, chip. Uh, and so there's a couple of interesting things on there too that I'm interested in, like for instance. Uh, pin number one and pin number three have got this sort of built-in operational amplifier and all sorts of other weird and wonderful stuff which I hope to explore over the next little while. But anyway, let's just go back to how do we blink this guy. So I think what we need to do is maybe start right from scratch. So I'm working my sandbox here, which is uh, Linux Mint 22, I think, uh, which I'm evaluating at the moment. Um, and so I've just basically download a vanilla Arduino ID. Uh, this is 2.3.2, which I don't normally work with, to be honest. I've I'm, I'm been consistently working with 1.8, whatever, with the old system, which is pretty much no longer supported. But um, how do we get cores for this? If we go to uh, this GitHub site here, it's open WCH Arduino core, and it's pretty well advanced. There's a couple of quirks about it, but basically all you need to do to get a blinky going is to uh, scroll down to, where is it, this link here. Uh, and so I'll just take a copy of that. And what it will do is we'll go to the Arduino preferences and, uh, and throw that in there and see if we can pick up the board. So under preferences, we have the additional boards manager, and sorry if you've done this before, it's a little boring, but for those who've never done this, this is the process. And then once you've got that, uh, you just then need to go to tools and board and boards manager, and we just do a search for probably CH will bring it up. Um, and yep, this guy here looks perfect, so we'll install that. Uh, 1.04. And that should allow us to maybe um, touch base with this um, with this processor, uh, just using. Uh, well, as it turns out, let me just get the video started so you can see what's going on on the actual. Let's see, start this. Here we go. So um, this is what's going on on the breadboard. Uh, so you've got a single wire coming in to pin eight. And then unusually, and I have um, I have burnt a chip by just assuming it was, you know, not reading the documentation carefully, just assuming it was like an AVR, but uh, unusually it's got our 3.3 volts coming in here on pin 4, and ground is actually pin 2, um, as per the diagram that we looked at. But yeah, single wire here coming from the WCH link E, uh, which you need to, there is a WCH link, but the WCH link is the one that you need to actually talk to it. And it's a single uh, wire which comes in on, that's pin number eight. Let's go back to the pin definitions again uh, and just have a look at that. So 
Yeah, you can see pin eight includes all sorts of um, all sorts of um, different capacities, including, as it turns out, the ability to do the program by this one wire. And I'll just pop this LED on pin number five, so we can call that PC one when we get to it. So let's go to a Blinky. So file examples basics blink and what we'll do is we will blink um, not LED built in but PC1 and uh, yeah once we've declared it output we'll just go that guy and that guy it looks about right we'll get the blinking going a bit faster because um, it's very slow blinking Let's go something like that. It's probably a bit better. And then in terms of the board, uh, here we are. We've got the CH32, and that's the one there, the CH32V00X, in this case 003, so that covers the family. Um, uh, uh, this is the uh, TTY ACM0. Anything else we need to do? I feel that it's probably... I'll just do the defaults, I think. And just go straight to can we compile it shouldn't be a problem to compile it no it looks good and then can we upload it so it's failure to upload because our access to the usb so of course because i'm in the virtual box uh, it's not able to access doesn't have permissions to actually access usb let me fix that and uh, and i'll get back a classic mistake Right, so I think this will work. I'm just going to, uh, I've just listed all the USB or everything on the USB bus and I've got this one here which is my WCH link and it's on 001003. So I just, I think, change the permissions for that. Looks okay. And then try upload again. And beautiful. And we have a blink. So you won't get some of that nonsense uh, unless you're doing what I'm doing, which is running in a, uh, a bit of a sandbox here, a couple of just weird things. Um, but yeah, once you've got the connection to that single wire, that's all that's required. Um, I'm pretty keen also to do a fade. So let's see if this is going to work. Um, so if we go to examples and... Uh, analog and we'll do a fade so I can get rid of this guy now because the blinking's working fine and uh, do we need that one too that's just a blank isn't it all right so what's happening with the fading so again we've just got to set this up ah now if you look at our pins they're not all analog so if we swap it over to let's swap it over to a zero which is what's that pin number three so I'll just pop that in there. And um, pin number three is also PA2. So let's just make sure that that pin is working. Should go back to Blinky. Shouldn't have got rid of it, should we? There we go. So basics, Blinky PA2 we're looking for. Is that a digital pin? Hmm. All right, we'll find out. So PA2. Uh, not LPA2, that's a bit silly, and we will make, uh, let's say, 100 and maybe 300, some fast blinking, and upload. So that looks good, but no blinky, so yeah, I suspect that is because this is not a digital pin, the PA2. I'm hoping that that's the case, and I haven't just blown it again. I think maybe PD6 might be on pin 1. Let's actually, let's use PD6. That makes a lot more sense, and we can check the blinky and then check the fade as well. So PD6 and then either A1 or A6, maybe. Um, where's my, here we go. So back to here again. Uh, so PD6. PD for digital, I'm assuming, and PA for analog, PD6, output, and then let's get that going, hopefully, on that pin, here we go, looks good, 
and blinky action is happening. Excellent. All right, so that's now where is our fade sketch? Uh, it's this one. And we'll call it, uh, I guess, A1 or PA1. Not really sure. Let's go to A1. So A1 and we'll just roll it up and roll it down and see what happens. So uploading looks good. No fade action. Hmm. Okay. Now um, I did read there was a suggestion that um, getting the cores via that preferences is good, but it's the latest code that is the best. Uh, so if we go to code and download, uh, because you can see the changes are happening, you know, pretty consistently. Uh, and so let's just, uh, let's just extract, where are you, extract, extract here. And then uh, what we also want to do is if we go to the home and open a new window and uh, we can't see all the files, so let's go to show hidden files to get our little dot Arduino. There it is. And packages. And there's our WCH. And there's our, I'm guessing, hardware. Yep, that all looks good. 1.04 all looks good. And then the downloaded one from the zip file here um i'm guessing would be maybe under cores well no that doesn't look right let's go back to here libraries nope uh oh it's just the same what am i doing this is just the same as that so in fact what we need to do is probably um i might actually just shut this down yeah i'm not sure how happy it would be with me changing these save my sketch no and the other one shut down. No, don't save. Yeah, this is a bit dodgy, but then we'll see how we go. So if I just delete all of these and put the latest version in, uh, probably just drag across. Nice. Wow, alrighty. Um, flying a bit by the skin here, but anyway. So we'll start it up again. Here we go. Go back to a fade sketch. Uh, so we want to under file and examples and analog and fade. And I think we were using A1. Let me just check again that that is the designation. Yeah, let's try A1 or PA1. Don't really know. Um, let's go A1. Hasn't complained about those files being swapped out on the fly and if we go to tools board go back to selecting this one no complaints that's nice um, oh there's a few more options did you see that we didn't know that before okay that's a good sign port back to this one uh, so that yeah, so it did make some changes. Okay, cool. I'll leave everything as default. Hit upload. Let's watch the video. And it is <laughs> fading. That is so good. That is so so good. Look. Okay, one thing which is um, just been doing a bit of reading and um, yep. So we've got two fifty five here. So eight bit. But this is supposed to be, I think, 16-bit um, PWM. So with some trepidation, I'll change this to, uh, what is that? That's um, 8, 9, 10-bit, I guess. And we will go, was that just 9-bit? Anyway, I don't know. I think it's 9-bit. Uh, so that should be slower ramping, and it is. Yep, okay, so let's go a little bit higher. Let's go, uh, let's go 4096, or oh, 4095. Uh, sorry to the purists out there, and we'll see if that slows it down even further. So it should be very slow ramping now. 
Yeah, lovely. Very smooth. And, you know, there's issues there to do with your eyes. Um, uh, it's got to do with the way that the light fades or doesn't fade. Is that ramping back down again? It doesn't seem like it is. Uh, okay, that's not good. Or do we just need to change this delay a little bit? Let's try yeah, I can't see that ramping back down again. Interesting. Let's try this. Ramping up. And staying up. Oh, no, there it goes. Okay, so maybe it was a timing issue. Um, yeah, so that's um, steps up to 4095. So that's some great resolution there on the PWM. And I suspect it'll be similar resolution on things like the ADC. Um, I hope I haven't left anything out. I think it's a great little um, microcontroller and the capacity is fantastic. And the software is coming along. The support is coming along. The um, Also, you know, the community is building and the examples are starting to flow. Hopefully this will help uh, inspire some uh, some people to maybe uh, try this little one. Still only 10 cents. Uh, you can get this pretty cheaply and the programmer. Uh, and so, and it's still a readily available chip too. It's being uh, it's been produced, uh, so I think that is probably a good option. I'm going to call that the circuit working for this week. We'll see you next time.